the ball falls with the court of the FA. But the FA is not alone. The FA does it in conjunction with the clubs. And so maybe the clubs, particularly championed by the Ghana League Club Association, Galka, can begin to consider, seriously consider, aspects of football or footballers' health in some of the decisions that are taken. That's my take. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce the guest, and you'll be amazed. I've got two characters in here. I'm using my words very carefully because they know a lot about communications. And I've got a general person who's also a sports fanatic and a sports journalist. And, and we have put them in between to prevent any form of chit chat between the two communicators. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. In a world where you can be anything, who will you become? When you can go anywhere and never be alone, how far will you go? When your voice can reach every ear in the world, who will you inspire? When your money can travel faster and further, who will it reach? When you can tell a story in every language, which one will you tell? When you don't need permission to turn your dreams into reality, you go for it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, go. And when you think you've reached your limit, we'll keep you going. Let's go. Hi, my name is Sasamwajan, a.k.a. Baby Jet. I want to congratulate the Black Stars for qualifying Ghana to the World Cup. You earned it in a hard way, beating Nigeria in their home turf, qualifying Ghana. Everybody is happy. We are supporting the Black Stars. Be determined. Give everything for Ghana. Play with your heart, and then we'll be here to support you. Watch the World Cup 2022 on Hisense TV for great picture quality and good sound. Hisense. Official sponsor, FIFA Qatar 22 World Cup. Folks, um, welcome back to the program. I'm going to introduce my guest, the one nearest to me. Uh, he's he, he's been here before. He's sat in this seat a million times before in the past. He's the current communications director at the GFA. He's a sports journalist in his own right, and uh, he is a member of Dreams. Oh, okay, you, 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 you're the communication director, Dreams FC. But uh, let's leave that out for the moment. Which they <laughs> But that's Henry Asante Chum. Uh, and and, and let, let, me, let me also add that uh, he's a Katangis. So, Charlie, <laughs> we very, very careful about someone. Charge. <laughs> 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 and then um, the guy who we put in between to prevent any form of communication between one communication director and another <laughs> is a one of the up-and-coming journalists in town, sports commentator, 
sports journalist. Um, He's with the multimedia uh, uh, broadcasting uh, uh, network, the various platforms that they have, the Joy, um, uh, Joy News. Simpa, incidentally, Love FM. Incidentally, I also saw him. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't see. I heard him on uh, Asempa. Yeah, he does some debate as well. Yes. <laughs> George Ado Jr. Yes, sir. Recently married. Django <laughs> Warfare. <laughs> Recently married. <laughs> and uh, the guy, George, has got a fantastic. Um, uh, should I say term? That's how everybody now recognizes him. Chaotic what? Chaotic movement. And then, the last but not least, um, he's also a former communist. In fact, let me read his official title because you get chow. Ibrahim Sani Dara, okay, is a CAF media officer, still a CAF media officer. He's a former GFA comms director. He's a former BBC journalist. He's a former student of Cardiff University. <laughs> and according to him, he's the owner of two of the biggest sports <laughs> online publish <laughs> according, to him. <laughs> according to him. According to him. That's a fact. <laughs> anyway. No, no, no. It's Ghana Sports um, and yeah. um, whatnot. Is, I think that. <laughs> Ghana Sports. I didn't know about Ghana two. I knew one. Okay. Now, maybe you didn't know about. Let's hear this. Right. Well, can I announce? I? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> can I announce? Okay. 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 From the horse's own mouth. Yeah. There's a third one to be launched okay. mm -hmm. by the start of next month. Mm. And, oh, so that's what you're doing. What happened to the Nigerian lady? Which Nigerian lady? I, I leave it there. God, <laughs> God bless our home, young man. I think it's get as strong. I think it's as strong. Both to defend <laughs> for <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I mean, I mean, guys, I'm, I'm sorry for, for doing that, but we go way back as we come way forward. <laughs> That's Sunny Dad and myself, and we met up. Uh, we met. We had interesting times in Cardiff. Uh, I, I can assure you, that was in the early noughties. Um, uh, that's how they call it, right? 2000, the early noughties. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So, um, Henry, you're currently in the position of a communication director. Sunny was your predecessor, more or less, if I should put it that way. And uh, I don't know if I should start with them or with you. Maybe, <coughs> maybe, maybe you can start with Sam. I think no, I think I will you because can start with Henry. No, can give no, you the no, current. no. The reason is this: <laughs> um, we have to give it to you, though, you and Yantechi, that you more or less established a department. That department because yeah. it was the, it was there, but it wasn't there in that form. And you did it to the level where now you're doing what web pages, you're doing tweet, a tweet, you're tweeting all manner of things, all various social media platforms. Where did the, where did that whole idea start coming from? Well, um, it was at a point in my career where I thought um, I've had enough of journalism. I needed to, in fact, at the same time of asking, the GFA. Whilst I was working at the BBC, the GFA had consistently asked me. To, to join the Federation, I had rejected it consistently because I thought um, I wanted to attain some, some level within the journalism profession. And then at the point after the 2010 World Cup, I had achieved perhaps I'd worked with the best media organization in the world. I'd done the World Cup opening commentary, the first World Cup in Africa, the opening commentary and the final commentary. Uh, within that same year, I'd won um, the Foreign Press Media Award and several other awards. So I thought I'd had enough, I'd, I'd learned a lot, um, and I needed to um, impart more. Now, the two, the two things I needed to do consistently, any time I came back to Ghana during those days, I had young journalists asking me um, to find an avenue where they could also, you know, learn from my experiences. But I kept telling them that it's never a learning process. It's an idea-sharing process. You never finish learning in journalism as it is in life. Uh, so I needed to find the avenue, so I decided to set up a website and all, and all of those things. 
and sometimes with beasts you have to phys to be physically on the ground. Then it came together at a point where the GFA came back to me again. And I thought that it would be the opportune time to be able to implement some of the ideas. I've seen some of the best media organ or best organizations in the world do on how they serve the media. So I wanted to do the same. We wanted to replicate the same. Um, you'd realize that it was new to the country. Um, to be honest, it was a department, but it was a new idea. People who were, uh, you know, the leaders in the Federation were now getting to know, even throughout Africa. It was even the first time FIFA was insisting that you must have a media officer, one media officer, not a media office. So this was where we started. And then uh, when I came in, it was um, myself, uh, Tamim Muiza, and then uh, Julius. Oh, Julius was a graphic yeah. person. Yeah. He, was a, 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 he was a chronicle before. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, we decided, you know, to do the best we can. And to be honest, we didn't have a budget. Uh, there was nothing. There was nothing in the office. We had to, you know, put things together as it is. Uh, there were difficulties because it was the start. A lot of the people within the Federation did not have, you know, the, the, the knowledge on how to run a, a media unit for the, for the Federation. So it was a learning process, a gradual learning process. And, um, you know, we, for instance, we're the first Federation uh, to get a take by Twitter, then Twitter was quite new. And also we we're trying to take advantage of new media and all. And then we had a newspaper then. And I thought, in my opinion, it was a loss making venture. So I pleaded with the um, general secretary then that um, we needed to close it down. We needed to focus more on new media and social media because that is the trend, it's cheaper, it's much more wider, it can cover more grounds than the newspaper, than the newspaper would ever do. So they agreed with my thoughts and uh, we closed it down and focused on there. Um, during my time, I thought that there was a lot that could be done with a lot of, if we had had the funding and uh, you know, the manpower, and, and still, you know, I thought that th there was more we could do. There was more we could do. So that was when, you know, Henry came in, and I think that they, they took it, and they've completely run away with it. That's the point I, I, I was going to get to, because you've taken over now. And the last time I was in your office, I, I, I didn't show it openly, but it blew my mind. You've actually established a studio there. Yeah. And you're now doing more or less like not necessarily live, but recordings that you're uploading onto the various web pages or maybe onto the various uh, social media platforms. How did that come about? Thank you. Uh, um, b before I answer your question, I would like to um, use this medium to show appreciation to Sunny. Um, I think he's been very helpful. Um, uh, he talks to me behind the scenes. We, even when we meet at competitions, he tries to guide me. Um, for instance, at the AFCON, there were things I, was, I wasn't, you know, um, there were things that looked quite new to me because it was my first AFCON, um, not as a journalist, but, you know, occupying a different portfolio. And so um, I like the way the fact that he calls me on phone late in the night, gives me tips and tries to, you know, guide me around. And, and uh, does he pick your calls? He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. So I, I just want to use this medium to... To, to thank him. Um, I greatly appreciate that and I would like to call on him to continue um, guiding me through the process. But, but to answer your question, I, I think I inherited an office um, without a plan, judging from how he exited you know, that particular uh, position from the Anas expose. So I needed to create things. And, but um, he mentioned that there were three staff members that he worked with. Um, one of the first things we decided to do was to set up a women's desk. 
to take care of the women competitions. I've seen. Yeah, so really now we have now. we have three ladies on that desk. Yeah. Um, the team is led by Matilda Jimedo, who is also a journalist, um, um, has experienced in the industry, has worked with many media stations, and she leads that three team uh, for on the women's desk. And I and I <coughs> I also noticed that we we look good on Twitter, we look good on Facebook, but there were times where it was quite difficult doing other things that is in terms of content creation now if i if i came to gbc to use your your studio to record a one hour program even if you are giving it to me for gratis it means you need to shut down all your live shows and make room for me so the first thing that came to mind was to set up use one of the offices to set up a studio a studio that will be multifunctional we can do video we can do our own photo shoot in that studio and then also get a multimedia editor so we employed two multimedia editors uh, who work on the content we do the recording they edit work on the content and then we 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 make it public and so we created um, a content show called the gfa news which is aired every friday in the evening where we gather all the activities of the FA during the week and we put it in a news form. Um, um, one, one of the things that I also observed was that <coughs> when, when it gets to competition time, our national teams sometimes, be, even before they exit Ghana to the tournament base, there is no proper photo shoot opportunity for the, for the teams. So we bought our own cameras. Today as we speak, we have about 10. Um, studio cameras Hello. that can function without, you know, necessarily renting camera from a TV station or not. And then we also decided to get our own um, OB setup. Okay. So today uh, we are able to do a live broadcast with eight cameras with an, an audio and video mixer with a team. So um, within the last two years, we've been broadcasting the Congress from Pram Pram with our own equipment, with our own personnel. You know, it cuts cost, it gives you the chance to be flexible, it also gives you the opportunity to communicate with your audience directly. You know, it shouldn't be um, that you always have to fall on TV station. So these are some of the things we wanted to do. Again, I, I, I felt that we needed to make our products more visible. So one of the ways was to put our women's league matches out there for, for people to watch. And it will surprise you that some of the games that we showed live had about 50,000, 60,000 views okay. live on okay. Facebook. And it's for that reason why today we have Betway as a headline sponsor of the Women's League. And we have um, another TV channel showing the games live. It's because I'm sure they monitored over a period and they, they thought it was doing well and they decided to, to come on board. So, Yes, from where he left off, I, I think we've, we've added more. Um, we are doing more. Um, today, we, we, we've also been falling on GH Media and other media schools to give us cameramen who comes, to, who, who comes there to, to do internship, mm -hmm. attachment. We go to GIG and pick the final year students to come around and also do attachment, go through and help the team and all that. So it's not been easy. It's been hectic, especially when you need to the people in line and get them along and um, change their way of thinking and thought and make them understand that this is the new way and they need to embrace it with both hands <laughs> but i i can give credit to the team that so far they've been very very helpful and we are doing quite well change their way of thinking brings me to you in particular because mm -hmm. now it's no more gig <coughs> yeah they now call you max <laughs> <laughs> okay. is that? university <laughs> of media Arts and Communication Studies. Okay, advice. you max. Accented by the president. Okay. Uh, school of, um, how do you call this? Communication? Nafti, Nafti comes under it. Oh, oh Nafti wow. comes wow. under it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So oh, really? There's a new university out there, just that they haven't uh, appointed the vice chancellor yet. Okay. But it's going to happen. So that's why they have moved the campus to Jowlu. Oh, no, GIJ moved the campus to Jowlu. Okay. But that's going to be where it is for oh. starters before they're going to get come. But um, are you gunning to be the vice chancellor? Who? You. Me. Yes. yes. When I'm retirement. <laughs> oh, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, Maybe they'll give you a one-year contract to, to start the, the journey. Oh, one-year contract? Yes. And if you let, let me go to JFPC. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my, oh my God. God. Yeah, 
But there is G in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want the I, you want the N, P. <laughs> anyway, so, um, 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 George, the role that the two of us play, yeah. this will be what they play, yeah. at least what they know and what they do. Um, will you be able to say, uh, put your hands on your chest and say that there have been much more quotation marks um, amenable? And I'm using amenable in a quotation mm. that the information you need, are you getting it from the EFI? It's an interesting one because um, Sunny and Henry obviously are hoping to make information available. But beneath all of this is also the fact that the EFI wants to control the narrative. So they want to churn the news rather than allow journalists to have the opportunity to go for the news, that's it. So if, for instance, um, Otoado is confirmed, it will be one of the plans for the FA that um, Henry and his team will put Otoado, you know, right before a camera, let him speak, and that is released to us. I don't know about whether Henry thinks we are okay or we are not okay. I'm here to tell him that. So I understand the bit of wanting to make things accessible. The truth is that we have had a lot more information we have had a lot more interviews to do our work but sometimes journalists want to also get the opportunity to control the narrative because the fa would ask questions the fa would put their interviews together but they would have to be interviews that put the fa you know in in, in the good lights which is professional which is what they have to do but maybe the other questions that journalists would want to to ask maybe the other questions that journalists will want to put in there and see what else comes into it. So I understand the bit of being visible, and they have been visible. Um, the content that we have had from the, for instance, the last, I mean, the, the two World Cup qualifiers, um, the behind the scenes, all of that is, is, is all great. But then we cannot say, maybe I'll say over, maybe between zero and 100%. I'll say in terms of being amenable, in terms of being open to us and giving us information as much as they can, because I've called Henry a lot of times on that, and as much as they can, maybe I'll put it at 60%, because there's still a little bit of a gap in how quick the media wants information and how quick the information actually does come from the Ghana Football Association. So there is a little bit there to sort out. I'll try and break it down maybe in, in, maybe in, in two phases. The first part is when it's got to do with the Ghana Football Association. So we, we are just coming back from before the World Cup qualifier. There were a lot of things that the journalists wanted to do in the build-up. We had players who were joining the team for the first time, debutants. We want before the game is played, for instance, Dennis Odoi, we want to do a feature on Dennis Odoi. We want to talk about it. We want to get into it. And then we're faced with, uh, the FA is not releasing the list now, or we are not going to have this now. We have to wait. That's a gap, obviously. Um, we're waiting for the first words of Utuado and, you know, the new technical team. There can be issues, you know, technical issues and all of that. We thought there was going to be a press conference where we were going to get the opportunity to ask questions and all. Then the FA did a 30 minutes video, I mean, 30 seconds video, 45 seconds video, put it out, media were not. And it all went well because the Black Stars delivered. The other side of it is if the Black Stars had did not qualify for the World Cup, the media were going to come back in and hard because they asked the first question, what was the whole point? Why didn't we get the information? Why did this go in? So when it comes to the information that we get from the Ghana Football Association, they have tried. The second part of it is the kind of structure that is in place, for instance, for the league that we love to ensure that things are flowing. And I don't know, I would be interested to find out what Henry has to say about that. For instance, with the Ghana Premier League, we're, we, we're just coming back from Hartsapok versus Kumasi Asante Kotavara Kras Sports Stadium. And we have spoken about this over and over again. It is difficult and always difficult to get our clubs to speak before the hearts of Oak, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko game. I don't know if there's a structure 
that the FA must enforce and ensure that some of these things are done to help the media. So when I, when I look at it from that angle, and then the, the final bit of when the news breaks, it's another critical area because a lot of the journalists are doing their work to get the stories out. So when there's a slight delay, in, and, and we say slight delay because I'm saying this relatively, because from the FA's point of view, maybe the information is not ready. And so there's no point going out, no point going out there. But we have seen a lot of breaking stories coming from you know, journalists before, which is normal anyway, before you know, the FA comes in. So I'd say that they have tried, but there are still some gaps that we need to look at. But on the good side, the, 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 the footage and the interviews that we would normally not get, Messi Tego ahead of the, the game against uh, Morocco, the friendly. It's, it's, a, it's an interview that you, you, you will not get, you know. I mean, obviously, unless you have a good relationship with him, even that one. If you want to speak to Messi, you probably have to speak to the Ghana Football Association before they give you the chance in there. So, yeah, they have tried. Is it, They're on a journey, mean, but they have you, You're saying that because um, shouldn't that then be the role of the communication team in the sense that as per what you know, as per what he knows, as per what he knows, because even though he's been here, there for a short time, he's been there for at least two years and he knows, you normally bring them, you set them at a press conference, even though there are limitations to press conferences. Yes. Now, Carl, can oh, okay. I come in? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> quickly. No. You see, George, what the media must understand is that there's a difference between um, what the team does, its um, responsibility towards the media mm. and what must be done. There are rules governing mm. all of these yeah. things. Not give unfettered access to the media. The team has to train. I'll come, let's say, the Black Stars. Um, the coaches will tell you that players focus on the game. Imagine that in Accra alone, you have more than 50 radio stations. Countrywide, you have maybe more than 500. Each and every one of a radio station, TV station, media house wants an interview. So when you please this person, what happens to the rest? They'll say you are favoring this person. Mm -hmm. And I'll narrate these things to you because I used to tell some of the staff in my team, in my private team, that is Ghana for Ghana mm -hmm. and the rest, not to even come close to the black stars. Because there were instances where, I remember Aminu Shadow, for instance, will get an exclusive interview through his own means, n without even you know, contacting me or speaking to me. He gets an exclusive interview. Some in the media would say, ah, because it's sunny, you got it. So what we did was to serve, and it's the same thing Henry is doing, mm. is to serve the entire media landscape at the same time without discriminating against anybody. So if your radio station is in Accra, you get the same content as the radio station in Asenkrigwa. So there comes the creativity of the media house itself. If you get the content, what are you going to do with the content? This is where your creativity as the media outfit comes to play. And there are rules. The rules are that a day before the match, you must open your doors for the team to speak with the media. So, as it is now, opportunity where even on a daily basis, we have content coming on a daily basis. So, the FA is actually going out of its way from its um, regulatory, um, you know, Function, responsibility. responsibility to give you just one day before the match, not more than 30 minutes. That is the law. But it ensures that it, it knows, the Federation knows that people need content. So they've tried to create the content. So when you get the content as the media, okay, maybe these are the angles Mercy spoke about in her interview. Which angles can we take? Let's discuss this angle. Let's call an expert here. Let's call an expert here. Then it becomes the thing. The sticking point from what George raised was that to go behind to prevent the FA from asking the questions so they can ask the questions directly. The difficulty there too is that the media cannot have the, the players or 
uh, coaches every time. They also need to plan. And there are a lot of things you need to, un you, you would understand when you are in the shoes of Henry. For instance, and I do understand, I completely uh, understood the GFA now. Football has now gone beyond the aesthetics and what we know. If, for instance, um, the law also is that you have to release your starting lineup for a match one hour, 30 minutes yeah. before the game. Mm -hmm. One hour, 30 minutes. Within that, if you release your squad, your starting lineup, three hours before the match, you have given the <coughs> opponent the opportunity to retweak their strategy of playing the match. Sally, you brought in <coughs> another dimension which I need to come in. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure whether, as a media practitioner, they are looking at you getting the lineup three hours before. Where the problem is, is that where this new idea of not releasing the squad and it was only done four days, five days before three the match. Days, three, days. <coughs> three days before the match. match. Yes. Whereas you give it, because I sit here, Sunny sits here, even he sits here, he knows, but let's assume he doesn't know. He knows the England squad already. And the matches are being played around the same day or the same time. Because it comes out a week and a half before, as was previously the case. But now it's changed. That may be this FA style. But where George is coming from is that then <coughs> it allows the media to create quotation marks or man of stories. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and maybe, maybe Sandy, before you continue, and, and, for, and for me, that the media is, is still the screen through which the entire Ghana is looking through Absolutely. Um, and to yes. try and yes. build perceptions and all of that. So, so it was critical and, and, and I, I would understand it for any other game. Now this was Ghana, Nigeria and a lot of people had the emotions invested in this. People really wanted to know what was happening. I mean Ghanaians, and, and I've said this, Ghanaians are, I'll say, Ghanaians are hypocritical when it comes to the Black Stars. They love the Black Stars than any other team in Ghana. That is a fact. When you see them ranting, it's because of the love they have for the Black Stars. And so they want to know about the Black Stars every day. They want to know what has happened with the Black Stars. So Ghana is up against Nigeria. The Nigerians play the beautiful psychological I mean, uh, card of telling, of telling us that, okay, our team did well, we're knocked out, but this is the team now. We have beefed it up. What have you got? It worked well in the end. But for most Ghanaians, we're like, okay, so what's happening with our team? Who is coming? Who is going to do this? When they hear, oh, four-man team, oh, there's a technical advisor, there's still a technical director. It, th there was a bit of confusion there. I'm very sure Henry and, and, and maybe the FA were worried, but then they had to look at the approach to bring it in. So for certain, for, from, for some of the things like Otoado, Black Stars coach, Ghana versus Nigeria, there are some huge events that happen that you have to manage the, the communication, especially, especially with well. the media, yes. so that it doesn't go... You know, south, and and I'm saying this because if we didn't qualify, you have heard a lot of things Seriously. from the media. Well, uh, bad results, you know, come with you. It's if you look, it's it's normal. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. Yeah. This yeah. evening, I was speaking with the Nigeria FA president. So you know, people are on him. He has to leave, Can and the rest is yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. His yeah. family. He's not a happy person. No, so, yeah. the, the, the public are against him. Yeah. His own family are asking him to leave. <laughs> Even the players. The players are asking him to leave. So it comes with bad results. Mm. So you you understand that when results don't go your way, yeah. there will be backlash. Yeah. That is understandable. But let me be on. Let me, let me, let me, because of, because <laughs> of the, to, the environment around to add to, to add to <laughs> what uh, George and Sunny um, have said, um, with, with particular reference to, to this squad for the Nigeria game, there were lots of reasons why the, the list delayed. Um, from the technical point of view, the coaches wanted us to hold on. Now, one of the reasons, again, was that we, we didn't want to come out with a squad that, that had doubts yeah. again we were working on nationality switch for some of the players and two weeks to the game even one week to the game we had still not gotten Elisha Usu mm. so just imagine naming a squad one month Maybe earlier four. yeah and then your nationality switch for Dennis Odre and Elisha Usu is not complete 
Meanwhile, the coach is on the neck of the FA calling from Germany every day that we should do everything possible to get the two players into the team. So if you were in our shoes and the coach wants certain players in the team and those players are ineligible at the time at the time you were planning to name the squad, what would you do? Yeah, so it was quite critical and it was for it was for good reasons. Yes. The optics, the aesthetics, it adds to the build-up, the, the, the discussions on, on the squad, about the squad, on radio and what have you, is what we are used to. But for this particular game, there was nothing we could do because we had two key things to deal with. First of all, we even had players who had played in the AFCON who were ineligible to play in the two games. The captain was one. Three weeks or so to the game, Baba Rahman got injured. Two weeks to the game, Suleimana um, um, Kamal Kamal had a back problem and was not playing for Ren in France. So sometimes you need to bide your time. Hold on. Take decisions. So you see, Henry, it's, it's, it's the managing, the you see, so it's the manage. whilst all of this was going on, brilliant reasons for not releasing the squad. It was excellent, but it was a quiet space for a while. The because, it, because, because, no, because, I'm, I'm, because, you, because you are, so you, 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 you are looking for, you are looking for, yes, you are looking for information, but you know, but you know, yes, your interest is to get the information, but you know, but you know, his interest, and the general, and the general interest of the media is to get the information, but you know, when you are a manager, both of you were also in this city. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, it's normal. It's, I mean, it's normal. I have met, I have normal. met, I have met George. Yes. I have met George yes. on countless we occasions on, where we speak, we, we speak on issues yes. like this. We have the media these candid kind of, discussions. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no, 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 hold on numerous hold occasions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. George and I were in Cameroon. So now, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Now, is it the case that because I'm old, so therefore when I call. You don't pick. When you call? Yeah. When did you call? Please, I called you three times today. You today? Didn't yeah. I was working at the stadium. stadium. Yeah, I was working at the stadium. Immediately when I finished, I called back. Back, back, in, the year, back, back in the year 2000. Now, when you called me, Sunny used to call me consistently. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the difficulty is that these days you become a lot busier. Oh, but you, let, let, let's forget about that. Uh, absolutely. So, you see, the thing, George, you see, I understand you perfectly. Yes. Because, George, the media, media, oh, 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 what is this? What is this? What is this? I wouldn't pick a phone. Uh -huh. I wouldn't pick, yes. a, phone. Uh -huh. wouldn't pick yes. a phone and call George and say, George, I know you are looking for information, <laughs> but we are working on nationality switch of some players. So, no, I can't share that information. Hold on. Pause. Pause. I agree. Pause. Sunny, he, I would even look stupid. Uh, hold on. If I if I told George that, ah, oh, so I would look stupid. Is that if George has cultivated you for a long time, and George were to ask you, that's the way journalism works, and you know that. You would tell him, but you say off record. And George, mm -hmm. no, go. this day's off record doesn't work. No, hold no. on. I had, a, I had, a, I had a WhatsApp chat with hold a journalist, on. and the, the following day it that was in the newspapers. That journalist, that journalist, that journalist, is, the, that journalist the, is not. The a following day it was a headline no, on. on a website. On. I'm coming. A that journalist, no. <laughs> so so Henry, I need to guard Henry, against Henry. Yeah, Henry right. That journalist is not a journalist. And next time you are not going to give it to him. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is that if you gave it to, for instance, if you were to give it to me. You never I called me during that time. Uh, I didn't. Because, <laughs> because I always yeah, want to give I mean, the, the FA yeah. the benefit of the doubt. No, yes. But there was some reason behind it. But even if I had called him and he had picked and I'm asking him A, B, C, D, he knows from working with me that yes, I wouldn't yes. breathe a word to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It means that I could also come out with my own speculation, but I do not say, Henry Asante, yeah. I think the FA is doing this. But you don't even go and say close sources within. Oh, you're speaking for yourself. Maybe George wouldn't. You wouldn't. But fine. Will do. But I'm saying that and, then you and should know the people you deal with. Unfortunately, sometimes it's difficult to tell. You don't even know. You don't yet. even yeah. know. So there are yes. too many radio. In fact, sometimes somebody will call you. You tell him that you are just speaking to him off record. Unbeknownst to you, he's recording. He's recording yeah, yeah, you, yeah, and yeah. he'll take you on air. Yeah. yeah. It's happened to me on yeah. countless yeah, occasions. I have suffered same. You see, so sometimes you've got to be careful. And these are sensitive information that Henry could not have shared. No problems with that. You know, no. so the gap has to be there.
you have to yeah. buy it so, to so the bullet. So how do we manage? So that's, that's my, so my that's the point. I'm getting how do you manage? So how do you do? Because if, 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 yeah, even if you're not going to tell anybody, it's fine. It's okay. I understand. It's his job. It's my interest that he keeps his job. That's the first thing. It's also part of it. So how do you manage the space? Uh, was the silence the best way? No, because in the end, in the Ghanaian palace, it's, it's in the, the it's, it's, it's in, in the, the pipeline. pipeline. <laughs> Because you see, when, when that happens, when, when, for me, my, my part is when that happens, then there is a lot going on. And most of these things are perceptions. People are, people are deliberately putting in negative news. Those who want to really have a go at the FA will put deliberately churn out negative news and make it look. Because for, for a while, it looked like IFA didn't know what they were about. What is happening? Wow. You can mention. And if you look at the commentary on social media, oh, but everybody knows Ghana squad. What is this? There were excellent technicalities. But how do you manage it? Because I've realized that, yeah, with, with, with Henry and, and this, this FA, and even maybe sometime with Sunny's FA, you know, they, there may be a fantastic idea that they have got. And what they are doing is great. But because of how complicated our media space is, the communication turns out, you know, and then everybody takes it in a different way. Okay, so when to, they add meant to, this to add way. to your point, you know, so, to add to your so point, the strategy during, the, it during the gap, during the gap, honestly, yes. one of the things we considered was to issue a statement to calm nerves yes. and just assure the public that steps are being taken to come up with a very competent squad for the two matches. Yeah. But then again, you sit down and you do analysis of, of putting out such an information mm. and then you do a retrospective analysis of how the media will take it and the negatives that will come back to bite you but are you aware are you aware it, as it, communication especially director? especially on the back of our debacle in camera understood okay. and that's what yeah, you know are you aware as communication directors that there is quote no love lost between those who are trying to do a job and those who thrive on getting information concerning that job and so therefore whether you like it or not in every profession you're going to get bad nuts yeah. but the problem is that are you going to allow those bad nuts to affect because you're not always going to get a hundred percent you're going to get somebody look i don't like sunny case close yeah so no matter what sunny no matter does what, yeah i'm going to find fault with him so the moment ah i've got this one Look at what he's saying. You get what I mean? Yeah, I Even though it may be the right thing, I don't care. I'm looking at the other dimension. So you're going to get those bad nuts, but, you, but you've still got to work within that. So how are you as directors going to be pushing these things forward to the media as a whole? But obviously, if you choose 9, 10, you think are responsible, cultivate them and move them so that what you are looking for to project is what will be projected. But I think Henry has said this thing um, beautifully a few moments ago. He said within that intervening period, he was speaking to George. And mind you, he would not be speaking to George alone. Gary would call him. Yeah. And maybe Sadiq will call him. Maybe uh, Michael will call him. Maybe, you know, you know, you know that within the trade, you know the professional ones. Yeah. So with them, you engage them. But for the ones, the naysayers, regardless of what you do, they'll still be stuck in their ways. So my suggestion will be that at that point, you just ignore the naysayers, engage the mainstream, tell them that, look, we are working on it. There are things going on that, you know, we cannot tell you, obviously, but we are still working on it. Mm. You know, then you wait for days like this to explain to them why you did this. They would understand you. But you know, the naysayers are there. And you know, the social media and uh, the growth, I think um, the media commission should do something about mm -hmm. the radio stations we have in this country. The numbers are too big. For a country like Ghana, 30 million population, mm -hmm. you have more than 500 radio stations. It's still, it's the freedom. And, and still it's the, coming, the freedom, yeah, freedom that the, the constitution freedom allows. Yeah. 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 Carl, so for, for me, I mean, uh, Sunny Henry, this is, I mean, the period we are in is such chaotic. Uh, yeah, chaotic and fragile. <laughs> you know, so complicated. Ahead of a World Cup, Sunny, you know, you know how these things go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we would see some, I mean, players joining us to beef up the squad. Yeah. Already, they are. They are setting narratives in the media, and if you have followed it, 
when some players don't play well, people are angry at them because of one or two. So we are in a space where, again, Henry, communicating whatever the FA is doing is critical. One, I'm sure the whole of Ghana is waiting for who is leading the Black Stars. Even before you do anything official, things have started flowing in the media about who is going to lead the Black Stars. What team are we taking? When we are done with that, the next hurdle, and, and Sunny, you have gone through this a number. The next hurdle is which players are going to join. The next hurdle is where is the team going to come? What goes on? Remember, even, even um, when we had the AFCON and we didn't do well, people brought back. Why did you go to Qatar? Why did you go? So you have a very, very serious tax on your hand in how to manage the communication. I think you, you have seen what has happened in the past. So we'll be expecting a better strategy that, going forward. You know, going forward. That saves everybody, even including the players, because sometimes, yes, it's true, the players hear things they're not happy about. There was a decision to, to name a, a four-man technical team um, to, lead the, to lead the Black Stars you know, to those two games. Um, obviously, three of them, um, Otto, George, and um, no, Didi Dramani, Didi Dramani, Didi Dramani. are attached. But for the fact that we engaged their employers and they agreed to release them, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have had those, those coaches. So, I mean, the best thing to do is to go back to their employers and re-engage them. First, you need to speak to the, the individuals to find out if indeed they are willing to, to, to still stay on and until the, the World Cup. And then secondly, you go back to their employers, thank them for releasing them, and then open you know, fresh negotiations to see if they will be willing to to give them back to you for the, for the World Cup. And that is what we are doing. Um, <clears throat> someone like Otoado, he is, he is held in high esteem. He is revered at Dortmund. Um, I remember when the president went, visited Dortmund before the playoffs, they were blunt. Dortmund said no. They were, just, they were not willing to, to even open any discussion with the FA. But because Otto loves his country and he wanted to serve his nation, he pushed them to listen to us. Fortunately, we reached an agreement and they released him for the two matches. So the best thing is to go back to them. Um, the president is in Europe as we speak. We are still engaging the, 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 the four clubs uh, consent, the three clubs consent. Um, I'm sure he will come back with the good news. Clubs, three. Three. Um, Didi Didi I, thought, I thought Didi had come back. Did he? Yeah, but he's still contracted yeah. to to no, 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 no. He's, he's working for like Rise to Dream no, here. No, 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 no. Yes. Okay. So George is Aston Villa. Didi is Nordjylland. Yeah, and, 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 and then Otto is not Nordjylland. Yeah. And, and and so, I think it will take a while. Um, but but so I am be looking up to you. I am, you I am very this. I'm very positive but about the outcome now because you've got at least is it two or three qualifiers in June. Um, calf have yet to confirm the dates. Okay. Yes. The draw is next week. Yes. 19th. 19th. Yeah. So, yes, after the draw. So the reason why I'm saying that yeah. is that that has that is the international calendar. Yeah. Those three there. Yeah. And then September, you brought two. Yeah. I, I believe Henry, sure, has sure it Henry, Henry, it Henry, Henry is speaking about that because he's, he's aware of the information that a lot of the African countries are asking that the matches in June be postponed. Yeah. Yeah. So they could play friendly matches. Ahead of the World Cup. Ahead of the World Cup. Yeah. That's because the, all our opponents be playing. would be playing friendly matches. Yeah. If we engage in qualifiers, it wouldn't be the same quality of opposition you would want Understood. for the World Cup. Sure. But then yes. comes the problem. Because Qatar is in November. Yes. There's no space in October. There's September. There is September. No, that's what I'm saying. There's yes. no, there's no space in October. There's been space in September. September. Yes. In October. No, October and yeah. then and November. In the lead up yes. to the, yes. to the World but Cup. But there's no space because, remember, if it had been a June World Cup. And so, therefore, why doesn't then, and I know we are digressing a bit, why doesn't Cup then decide that, look, Nations Cup do that before, yes? Well, it will not be possible because the African Cup of Nations is the flagship football competition for Africa. Africa. The Euros championships are the flagship for Europe. Africa started playing before Europeans even thought of having a continental championship. False. Why do we, it's true, why do we always have to bend over to Europe? We are not bending over to Europe. What I'm saying here is this. I personally have advocated 
four years is enough for me. Hold on. Uh -huh. Four years is enough for me. You choose the time you play. Asia, place it in January and February. The only exception that they've done is next year's own. The course is being held in a country that it rains like hell, so they are moving that to June. Okay? Instead of January. Yeah, instead of January. Yeah. But apart from that, every four years is being done like that. Conable, every four years. Uh, 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 the news maybe two years, they've changed to four years. Yes. Coca Calf, yeah. every four years. Everybody except. No, we also think differently. In Africa, we think that the, the consistent playing of the AFCON has brought um, football to a level that was not there previously. <laughs> so you would have a situation where we are consistently playing the competition. It's making our players much more experienced. It is giving them Exposed. much more exposure. It is giving us more um, My views age. and mileage worldwide and all. I so, find that difficult to accept because that one, the players getting all those mileage and all those sort of experience and whatnot has to do with huge, uh, uh, UEFA Champions League and all those sort of things. I, 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 I think no, we no, no. Because in terms of the one competition, is the one tournament, that, mm -hmm. and he knows, is the one tournament that if the host nation is not playing, crowd, be what? Mm -hmm. One Well, <laughs> well, that it's 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 a problem because of the continent we find ourselves. Yeah. If Africa traveling was to have been within the continent, within the continent, the continent. Traveling, uh, even if, within this West African zone, exactly. Zone. Yeah. If, if travel was as cheap, you can imagine the number of Jump to a train people want will, to go yeah. by themselves yeah. to go and watch the Afcon. Yeah. People don't always want to sit at home and watch television. Some of them want to go and enjoy the fun. That's right. Absolutely. And what you see on television during the African Cup of Nations, not comparable anywhere, no competition Everybody in the world. That. Yes. Everybody knows that. So let's keep what That's we like have. That's why the life really make, is there. Exactly. You know make the most of it. Brazil. That is why every Brazil. African footballer Rio wants Kandiba. to go to the AFCON. Please, don't join the Europeans. No, Rio Carnival. They want to give us ours. This is ours. This is ours. Our. Support your own This is ours. I, I, I think, I think, I think. Rio, Rio Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think the other point, the other point is that if you've, if you've looked at a lot of uh, African countries, it is hosting an Afghan that pushes them to put, to build infrastructure. It's true. So even from a development point of view, to, 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 to come up. Yes, yes. I've heard. As we speak, there is no way. I've heard that statement. Yes being touted out by Isaiah too. I have been at a media conference with him and I put and told him point blank, it's false. Even the World Cup, the stadium, this infrastructure you're talking about, have they not become white elephants in South Africa? Please. He doesn't hold water. Well, Carl, no, but, but in the past, 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 I'll use Ghana. Carl, I'll use Ghana. The, but the truth, the truth Ghana. is so also that. Let's let uh, just point to Sekunde. 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 When you go to Sekunde, even what happened? Have gone in what happened? Have gone in but world. for the AFCON. Well, hold on. I mean, hold on. Hold on. So the next hold on. step is next to the AFCON. But for the AFCON. Exactly. Hold on. But for the AFCON. The training pitches Man I saw. Man in Bani was almost murdered when he did. How do you call that your your department? What, which uh, pitch inspection, whatever it is. Club licenses. Club licenses. Club licenses. But back when he said Kumasi was not even up to standard. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, but the issue is... Okay? Yeah, but, but, but Carl, so I said that the issue is... So if he wants the AFCON, the stadium will be up to standard. Oh! It's the same thing. Look, look at Cameroon. Look at the, the name Cameroon has. Did you ever imagine that six years before, they didn't even have stadiums to play league matches? Yeah. I know. The African yeah. Cup That's of why Nations. the JCC was taken away from them. Yeah. I was, Th that was, I a was uh, at Japoma in Douala. Yeah. Amazing facility. I've been to World Cups, and I can say that the Japoma Stadium, like many others, yes, spread across I'm the like, yes, country, is comparable. Is true. Even the so without the Afcon, but, but, but would they have had the But they still would have had the Afcon. Yeah. At one stage, they would have had it, and so develop up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, yeah. So the it frequency. Yeah, but, but, but like in, in defense 
of Issa Hayato when he makes the point about development. The problems of having um, stadia that are left like where they become white elephants elephant. is because one issue of location has been there, and the issue of maintenance does not. And that is why I'm saying so. And, and, yeah, but, but that's so, the point. So you have the FC, but in you have the FC. So I'm saying that without the Afcon 2008, we don't have Tamale. It's we don't true. have a sepal. What have a sepal. we do with the second you have a and all the training pitches at the moment, we have a sepal line. Yes, because a sepal was only recently that Tamale was released. Please, can you clarify that for me? Tamale will host. The Ali Mahama Kedom who hold yeah. the yeah. Yes. Yeah. Only recently. Yes, but I'm saying, for instance, a Sipo has its own issues because the people in Sekendi and Takade want Jimmy Lukwasi was closed down. They, they, they have to go to Sipo. They are not interested in a Sipo. Yeah. So who put the stadium at a Sipo? We have to go and ask him. It can't be the problem of a competition giving you the opportunity to put up edifices. So there is a there's a good there's a good point there for having more competitions to give us, and it's <laughs> it is there. So yeah, if, if if you make the mistake of not Situating the edifice at the right place where where will be active for people to use. It's another. It's another. Right. Issue in case you switched on your TV set, um, <laughs> um, this is saving our passion. We are looking at the role of communications uh, in helping to enhance our uh, football in this country. I've got uh, the current communications director at the FA, uh, Henry Asante Chum. I've also got George Addo Jr. from the Multimedia uh, Broadcasting Group, and then I've got uh, my junior brother. Ibrahim Sandidara, who happens to be a CAF media officer, um, ex GFA communication director, ex BBC journalist, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying everything. And the man who owns who Ghana's, the two largest, uh, Ghana's uh, largest <laughs> football website. So that, that I know about that yes. one. I will agree with him on yes. that. And one. he's launching a and new one. Another one. They put you the third one. Yes. <laughs> Right, uh, he's making more so, money. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so um, that's what we're having at the moment. We'll continue the discussion. We're going for a short break. Don't go anywhere. Sheyi Emmanuel Adebayo. Black Stars, well done. Congratulations for qualifying for World Cup 2022 in Qatar. We are all going to support you guys. You guys are make us proud, West Africa proud, and I'm pretty sure in a couple of months you will make the whole Africa proud. Ghana Black Stars, Maya Depa. This Qatar 2022, we all watching all matches on Hisense TV. The sound is perfect. The image is crystal clear. Hisense, everyday prices for everyday people. Hisense, official sponsor, FIFA Qatar 22 World Cup. Our sports. Yes. Betsboro.com.gh. In a world where you can be anything, who will you become? When you can go anywhere and never be alone, how far will you go? When your voice can reach every ear in the world, who will you inspire? When your money can travel faster and further, who will it reach? When you can tell a story in every language, which one will you tell? When you don't need permission to turn your dreams into reality, you go for it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, go. And when you think you've reached your limit, we'll keep you going. Let's go.
right, folks, um, welcome back to the program. I'm amazed already. <coughs> already one hour is already gone. Oh. Can't believe this. I thought we had only done 30 minutes. I've been told that I've <laughs> less than 40 minutes. It tends to happen when you have uh, people who speak and speak their minds and speak them extremely well and quite passionately. Uh, 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 today, in case you switched on, as I said, we are looking at communications, the communication director of the FA and what it does in terms of media how to push the game forward. I've got Henry Asante Chum, the current communication director of the FA and the former journalist in this house. I'm still a journalist. You're still a journalist. <laughs> I'm still a journalist. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> no, but you see, you made it I said a former journalist in this yes. house. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, okay. 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 When did I leave here? 2012, eh? I can't remember. Wow. Ten years 20, ago? Yeah, 2012. Ago. Wow! It was January, no, February 2012. Mm. Already? After the Gabon Equatorial Guinea tournament. Uh, yeah. After he had taken full advantage to go to SA to go and report for the Guinea tournament. And then um, George, George Ado Jr., who's from the multimedia uh, group. And then um, Ibrahim Sanidara, who, plenty titles, but the key one is that he's a CAF media officer and he was. Recent, ah, you are, you are the recent. Uh, Very helpful. Uh, 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 you didn't go. Afcon. Garua. Yeah. Yes, he was yes, there. I, I saw you at there. Yes. He was there. He was there. Very helpful. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, it, it, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? But having said that, so here's a situation where the media on one side needs the information. Quotation marks. It may not be getting what it wants, and so quote start manufacturing something if there's a need for it. And then there is the FA on the other side, through its communication director, which now suddenly has to go into consistent um, defense mode because people are coming up with all manner of conjunctions and stories. How do we get them, or how do we get to narrow the gap as it is? We've given ideas here, but how can it practically be done so that it works for not only the benefit of the media houses, but also works for the benefit of the FA. Because Henry has given us ideas of some of the things he personally and you have done in terms of enhancing and expanding. I personally wish that they will break down all the walls at the FA Communication direct the Directorate and do something better. And let the studio, because the studio is too, a bit too small for my liking, but we must much bigger in terms of whatnot. And then you have because you're not only dealing with electronic, you're not only dealing with social, you're also dealing with print, the oldest form. Yes. And I think maybe we should have something like that. But unfortunately, everything is lumped up together. And if today print is not what it used to be, because with the advent of electronic and then since new media, then it means that very soon you'll be still be taking, still be forgetting about a large chunk of a society which still tends to operate with the how, old media how, in mind. How have you dealt with, with the print media? I, I think, fortunately, fortunately, um, I have a good relationship with most of them, um, from Daily Guide, Kofi Dionum, to Daniel Kenu, to um, Morris. Morris Quanta, the editor. Rosalind Amo. For, uh, luckily enough, Rosalind serves on one of the committees, so she frequents the FA um, for meetings because she's the, I think, vice chairperson of the Women's League Board. And um, we have a good relationship. Um, John Viga is another example at, at, at Ghanaian Times. I've, all, I've dealt with them professionally, sometimes via WhatsApp conversations, phone calls. And I am also um, happy to say this, that sometimes they don't even call me they always you know check on the fa website for information and the only time they, they call is when they do not understand certain things and they want you know um more details to freshen up mm. and to um add some juice to to the story um, whichever angles they want to they want to project so the print media we we have served them quite well um especially because you know these days we do a lot of transcripts as well and the print media th thrives on transcripts thrives on you know getting the the information you know and making the information available to them um, um we also know that they feed they feed a certain 
group of people. There is still that you know group th that they serve who rely on Ghanaian Times, Graphic, Graphic Sports, uh, uh, Daily Guide. They also have their constituency, and you need to serve that constituency as well. So even though social media is the, is the ish today, and website is also what a lot of people pay attention to, um, we also have some sort of um, you know good rapport mm -hmm. with, with the print media. I'll let you talk, but I also ask you, do you, and answer this one, do you also frequent the FA website consistently? Yes, I do. When I, when I need information, I, I go there. I, and, and it's more like a routine check, not only the, the website, but also the Facebook page. Is it updated frequently? Handle. Yes, updated. It's updated. Well, there's some websites you look in. No, no, country. no. It's updated. Um, On and, daily and, basis. And, and, and this, and this, this we actually, from Sunny. Yeah, but this is the point I was making. Basis. This is the point I was even making. And just coming back to it, the point I was making was that I, I hope Henry is aware. This football association setup for many media men and a lot of onlookers, they expect top-notch communication because IFA boss has been in the media before. Henry has. Been, I want to go. Right? If, if, you, if you look at the general us, secretary, the general secretary has been, is a media so, person. So, um, Henry, you are not. I hope you are not surprised when something goes wrong and everybody's attacking. I sometimes the Twitter handle makes a sport, like a typo, and everybody's jumping on. It's not. I, I remember in the build-up to the Ghana Nigeria. The Twitter handle posted something about electricity. We have more electricity, and once that went Still. on. Yes, yeah. when that went on, there was a serious attack under, under the, right under the, the tweet, yeah. and they had to delete and all. So there's a certain expectation. That is why people are up there. And, and for every issue, it's not even about just the Black Stars and, you know, the Women's League or whatever. But if there's an issue about sponsorship, the expectation is that the communication will be clear so that nobody goes in and out. Sometimes I, I can understand the problem because of the dynamics of communications these days. We have a SWAT platform, we have this platform. So sometimes you may have the general secretary reacting to somebody, someone picks that up as an official communication and tries to put that back at, at an interview but that Henry granted somewhere. So no, no, but that's the problem, right? Because others will ask, George, yes. why must there be a reaction? If, for instance, you've got 15 million pounds yes. as sponsorship for the league. Yeah. The shocking thing is that you, I, Sunny, not Henry, we've got Henry. Yeah. We, uh, Henry would know. We all know how much each club is getting for each position they place in the league team. Mm -hmm. But we don't get the breakthrough here yes. in Ghana. Yeah. Regardless of how small the money may be, yeah. at least let me know. Get the breakdown. Yeah. And let's put it there. Because I sit in my lecture theater. And I talk to students, and I lecture them, and I lecture them that A, B, C, D. So when Manchester United get this, they get that, they get that, they get that. Sir, how much do the Ghanaian clubs get? There have been reward packages. I mean, to answer that question, yeah. there have been reward packages. Which have been spelled out um, clearly for that um, one. In the last two seasons. And graphics. First, on graphics, name, on very good. So first, second, very good. third, and, and all very good. But there's a head yeah. very good. This, and and when, anytime I make a point, it's because I can see what's about to come. I don't like the idea that we discuss a lot of, um, you know, how much the Black Stars are receiving and all of that. No. Black Stars do well and go, but it is part of the conversation. No, but why should you? Why should you know? What the, do you know how much the England players earn? No, we don't know because that's the point. Yes, because it even goes to their favorite charity. And Henry knows. And Henry knows. And Henry knows. Henry knows. But I, that's I, what I don't like. He had no right. Yes. And no business. No, yes, how much yes, yes. Yeah, no right, no business. Un unfortunately, I think, I think, so I think going into the World Cup, yes. this is my special project. Going into the World Cup, the media would now have realized that um, there's something they've also benefited in Ghana qualifying for the World Cup. A lot. So it is important that they also try to protect the Federation in some ways. And what has destroyed the Federation the most is discussions about money, um, particularly attacking uh, players and officials as money-hungry people or players as people who don't care about the nation, the nation they don't yeah. care about the country, yeah. and all they think about is money. money. 
it destroys everything you've built over the years. So I suggest um, this goes to the authorities that some of these things we should just, you know, manage the communication. Manage the communication it's the well. Critical thing. Not to put it out in the public. Yeah. And then also... No, but it's never put out in the public, Sunny. Yeah, in the see, past way. In, 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 in the past, the past it, it has been. And, yeah. and, and not only that, officials, but yeah. also there are certain people who calculatedly, hmm. in certain positions of authority, yeah. who calculatedly go out there and leak certain leak information yeah. to their friends in yeah. the media. Yeah. And it comes back to us. And then also, this is a plea also to the players, that... They should not take a position. I, I know within from now up to the time we go to the World Cup, there will be talk about bonuses and the rest, how much they'll earn and the rest. They must be flexible. Um, they must also be careful with the language they use. In the past, a lot of players were saying, oh, I do my me and on me, and, yeah. it is my work. Yeah. Your work is your club abroad. Europe. If it is you are playing for Hearts of Oak or Asante Kotoko, that's your work. Yeah. When you are playing for Ghana, you are serving your nation. But that doesn't mean that you should not be paid for what you do. You do. So when you go there, go there with good faith. Can I ask this question mm -hmm. again? I need to clarify it. Because you've gone into some form of details. Do English players get paid? They get money. Yes, they do get money. No one says it. And many, 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 many countries, the players do get money. Let me tell you, um, Yusuf Chipsa is perhaps might be watching us. Mm. When we started going to the World Cup in 2006, yes, he was part of the negotiation team yeah, yeah, yeah. for the players. And Otto. And Otto. Yeah, I know. Oh, wow. Yeah. And do you know what, how they reached their figures? They spoke to their colleagues in yeah. the other teams. Yeah. So obviously, those colleagues yeah. were paid. I remember. Um, yes. But they don't say. Can yeah. I say one thing? Don't yes. Those colleagues are paid. But the money does not invariably go to them. I, do it goes I doubt to it. their favorite charity. No, 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 no. Maybe, no, no. maybe you are I, using the, the, the English, the English, the example. English. But example. even that, no. even that. So I'm not they, in Africa. All I'm yes. trying to say yes. that. In all, I'm, all I'm trying to, all I'm trying to drive the point home is that nobody releases any figure. Yes. Officially. Officially. Yes. Obviously. Yes. For, for instance, I mean, the Cup of Nations in Cameroon. Yes. Yeah. In one of the meetings, our players were telling us how much. The other countries, it is true. Have to, yes, because it's, it is true. because because they, they are they are on club platforms. Yes. and they discuss some of these things. Yes. They are on other platforms yes. and and they talk about these things. Yes. you know. So yes. our players were telling us how much were paid to their friends in the Cameroon team. Yes. Uh, Mijer, for instance, and they'll uh, show you the messages. And, and they show this the messages. This is a player. You this know, is player. But, but you, don't this is much, you don't hear about it. You don't hear about it in, in the Gabon. Media. Oh. You see, but here it's a big deal. When you, you do a budget for the team, it's already out there. And then this is where people get worked out because yeah. maybe the country is going through difficulties. And the football industry is a lot different from, you know, other sectors of life. You know what the football industry has, be, has become? If we want to be among the big boys, we have to. Yeah. We I truly have, have I to I don't spend. have a problem. I, I really don't have a problem with what... Even my producers and directors were saying that they are technically paid, but even though it doesn't come to them outside. I agree. I agree on that. But the point that I'm trying to drive home is that there is not a lot of confusion over Money. monetary matters. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Which is a fact. Yes. Unlike on yeah. this part of the world. Yes. Yeah. We have where it becomes of Sayo and FIFO. And with yeah. all due respect, it got to its bottom. Yeah. When we saw the picture of the kissing of the man in, in, in Brazil, in Brazil. Right. and it's made so many things. So I think that, in terms of PR, yes, if for anything at all, if you've agreed on a hundred thousand, let them give it to their favorite charities. Yeah, it, it does a lot in terms of PR, mm. because like you said, Sunny, your business really is with the club you're playing for. 
they pay and that's why they have quotes first choice of your services yeah but car is difficult to but tell car, somebody car is difficult, difficult to tell somebody what you, you see money for. That, was, that's one, was money. exactly <laughs> one but the charitable works that the players in africa do the Europeans don't do it. I know. They don't have hospitals on yeah. their exactly. own. Yeah. I know. Building That's how I would agree with you. Schools. Schools. Yes. Schools. Yes. Yes. School uh, fees. One, yes. There is no doubt Hospital about it. Hospital bills. People queue in so front of their own. So you see what I'm saying? So I'm uh, saying uh, that it, it's managing, I'm going to say, it, it, it's managing the communication and the PR, as you said. Ghanaian players do a lot of things. I don't know why. And if some of them are watching, I don't know why they want to do it always and say they don't want it to go out. These days, we're encouraged yeah, a bit to put them, them out there. When yeah. they come back, they do, they, they go yeah. back, they give and all of yeah. that. Absolutely. So it's about managing the space. I, you don't know why. <laughs> it's about managing the space. Ask the MP. <laughs> they wake up in the morning <laughs> at 5 a.m., have their quiet time. By the time they open the gate at 6 o'clock, they're fair to line. It's, you see what I mean? It's the same with the footballers. That's what I'm yes, trying to say. Yes, it's so the same with the footballers. Yes, so that, that, yes. so give I, the money to so them. I, let them do I, their I tell you what, I tell you what, one, 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 one day I was, I was talking to one of our players who is still in the team, and he said that, Charlie, see, can I get a gun of food at the end of the day? It's true. It's true. Yes, and the check before, and he, and he was before, showing they, me, before they even leave. Yeah, camp. yeah, yeah. And he was showing me before they even leave. Showing camp, me please. school fees he had paid. Please, the day before. Please. Exactly. Please, you know. Please, I, listen. When the Black Stars used to camp at this hotel, Wangara. Wangara, thank yes. you. That one I was looking for. I know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Going back then. I know. Yes. Yes. Going back then. Tony Agua and the workman. Yeah. Those in those days. You yeah. come and yeah. see the queue. Oh, is that it before? That it was Butler's yeah. time that it started yeah. going to yeah. Wangara. Yeah. Yes. Then continued all the way through Jawula and then Dosena and all those people. And you see people there. <laughs> I remember a guy. Yeah, he's late now. He's called um, Sepete. He used to groom footballers, so he groomed uh, Abladekuma, Shamukui, and the oh, rest. Wow. And I remember there was one team manager. I hear he's also late. They call him Saikochi. Saikochi, oh, yes. He was working at the NSA. Yes. 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 Uh, you know, Sepete uh, was coming to Angara to, to get into Angara. Saikochi said, look, the players have gone to rest. Sepete started pouring insults on <laughs> Saikochi. <laughs> Only Benny in Kabla de Kuma Jenshi. Never back. Never back. In Kala, they can, 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 that's the uh, country we live in. But the good thing is that it's changed. Yeah. It's changed. You, now, you can't walk into a five-star hotel, with all due respect to those hotels then, and can't tell the people there that I made a blood Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. You would dare. They will throw you out. Yeah. Their own security in the hotel will throw you out. So you have to find that. Yeah. But what it is is that there is the issue of the media on one side, the public on one side, and the FA on the other side. And the FA, I think, in this particular case, being fronted by the communications team. So if we've got that, we've understood that sometimes they're not prepared to give all. There's a reason for that. The media needs so much stories so much information. The public depends on the media for that information. The question I'd ask you, and I'll be a bit hard on you, George, is yeah. that, because you're representing the media here. Some of the reasons that we seem to request for information tends not to inform, entertain, and what's the other one? Educate. 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 It is intended to create mischief. It's true. It is intended to malign people. Yes. How does the media get its act together? Because you are the ones who are yeah. the buffer between the FA and the public. So 
I think it's it's a bit of orientation that we need um, going forward in this crucial period. So Sunny Sunny already gave a hint of it, and he says that there are privileges that come to you as a media man because your team is in the World Cup. Priority journalists. So yes. in as much as yes. in as much as you want to go out with any story, you also have to remember that you are a part of this whole plan. We have the oversight responsibility of ensuring that things are put right, but things must be put right in a way that you don't destroy the whole product that we are working around. In times past, we have gone hard at things and destroyed them, and we have had to feel uh, the problems. There are some of the things I can't say here, but having someone like Sunny at uh, CAF is such a good help for those who have dared to For go those who didn't get accreditation and, and he helped them secure one. Yeah, let me get them. But the same Sunny so was. The same yes, 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 problem when he came to Abs Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so so this, this, is what, this is what I say. I, 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 I'd say that going forward, we must understand the responsibility we have to keep the kind of feeling we have had after the Nigeria Ghana game. Nigeria afforded us the best opportunity in two games, in 180 minutes, to bridge the gap that was there between the fans and everybody. We all came together because we had to unite against uh, the enemy. And by God's grace, we, won, we were able to get the Perfect. result that took us to the World Cup. So now, we will ask the key questions. But we have to ask the key questions with a set, with a mindset that it is supposed to be helping the national team. It's supposed to be helping the players. It's supposed to be helping the whole agenda. We don't go in there with um, a negative approach to try and destroy what we are building. But it's not restricted me, yes. to the national team. No, 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 not, not, not just that. Because it's, it's the club size is a totally different kettle of fish. Yes, yes, I agree. It's not. There are things that we have to speak about. If a crowd heart goes wrong somewhere, we must talk about it. If the Black Stars didn't play well, we must talk about it. But we don't have to talk about it in a way that makes it, you know, like you are destroying the product almost. So we can talk about how, how good a player did or how bad the player did. But we must have that mindset that we are part of this. And it is. It is. I've met um, friends from, from, from the UK. And I see their posture when they have to talk about three lions, <laughs> or when it's got to do something about three lions. It's that kind of, um, you know, patriotism that we need, exactly. and professionalism that we need, exactly. you know, going forward in this period. And that's what I think. Exactly. In fact, this is what I wanted to finish on. That it seems that a lot of times, a lot of Ghanaian journalists, particularly in the sports industry, come up as against their own country. I've been in a situation where I had to separate fights between Algerian journalists and Senegalese journalists. Mm -hmm. Because both groups were very passionate about their countries. So we have to get to the point where, just as George was saying, I sat in a newsroom completely dominated by uh, English people. And we all knew then that their national team was rubbish. But they will tell you they had the best player in the world. They will sit in your face. Then they will tell you that Rooney was better than Messi. They were supporting their country. I don't see that with Ghanaians. I think that we are all too eager to... First of all, the first point of call is the GFA. Find somebody at the GFA to blame. Get a player, you know, go at him, do something against the player. Where's the patience? I think we must think through some of these things the way we do. And if, you know, good things come, like the World Cup has come to Ghana, you'll see the benefits. I'm already um, getting to know that uh, Twitter, for instance, they sign up a few Ghanaian journalists to be their World Cup correspondents. Some will get opportunities to go on Super Sports and the rest. The opportunities are many. Enormous. Enormous. And it's there for everybody. Um, you true? must also realize that when you go to the matches and you are given accreditation, those that have qualified have preference. Yeah. Even on match day, yeah. SAD yeah. Yeah. Um, That's distribution. That's why yeah. I need to find out from Henry now in terms of what 
then it's the FA's plan because you've got what seven months 67 months yeah in terms of media accreditation one it's controlled by FIFA I understand has it been opened yet no not yet. open good then probably the next question you probably want to ask is that he talked about Ghanaians being given preference because Ghana has qualified. Yeah, I've, I have been I have been to three World Cups, so I know how it feels. Exactly. Two, I mean, on on match days, when 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 other journalists walk to the media area and they are looking for match day seats for for the media for the press area, they are asked to wait until the countries who are playing have. You know, been been dealt with. Yes, so, for instance, George is coming from Ghana. Is, if Ghana is playing against Portugal, Portuguese and Ghanaian journalists are priority journalists. Yes, they are dealt with separately from the other journalists. Same for press conference, access to post-match and pre-match press conference. Because you are the preference. You are the country. The 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 um, they call it the PMA, participating, the participating member, member association. association. That's how they call it. That's how FIFA, um, you know, terms it. So, I, I I I want to believe that, first of all, in 2006, when I got the chance to be at the World Cup, I was so green, young in the job, first World Cup. Didn't know my whereabouts, but four years later, I had grown into a better person based on the experience that I had in Germany. 2010 was an upgrade. 2014, I was more mature, and I understood how World Cup, the, 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 the ins and outs of, of being a journalist and covering a World Cup tournament. There are journalists in Ghana today who will be going to Qatar for the first time in their history nice. or in their lives. And maybe as journalists and last. covering the World Cup. The opportunities. I got a chance to work for a, a, a O Global. Yes, in, in uh, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. And I was paid well. That was in 2014. Uh, um, I am sure that I am sure that but for the fact that Ghana had qualified for the World Cup. I wouldn't have had that Let opportunity. Let me confess this. <laughs> yes. Let me, Let me confess this. I was still in the UK then mm -hmm. when the African Nations Cup in 2008 was to be played. Yeah. I came down to get, collect data. Martin Davis saw me. Yeah. What? You are here? Round commentary. I went there very, very gradually. When they passed me the envelope and I opened it, Mm -hmm. I appeared every day. Any job for me? <laughs> <laughs> Any job for me? Yeah, you know, I those did, are, those are the opportunities, you know. Yeah. I did quite a few, yeah. but I know where you're coming from. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that with when it gets to World Cups, it's, it's a different ball game altogether. Because regardless of whether Ghana is meeting Portugal and so therefore... They have priorities. We all know that when it comes to the BBC, when it comes no, to the IT, that, no, that no, is different. Those are different. Those are different. Those are different. No, no, no. no, no. Ah, the right. BBC will not even go and queue for, no, no, no. for yeah. much Because they tickets. have rights. No, they have rights. It's because they have they rights. Are dealt, they are dealt with differently. differently. There's a media you know. manager for yeah. the right holders. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they for, are. For instance, no, okay. In fact, they are giving front of the If you want me to move away with BBC and ITV, okay, Daily Mail. The sun. Say no, simply belong put, to that category. Simply put, it's the English, Brazilian, yeah. American journalists that yeah. are given quote like priorities. German, obviously, yeah, Italian, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. But the this larger is the, platform. This but, is where the cow. My why doesn't my radio station in a subway? Nobody knows Opokwa Mankwa. But then that is why Henry sent Henry Asan to Chum of Isuboy yes. to be able to go there and tell them that, quote, and you're beyond the Benya ticket. But the point is that that communication gap. No. And, okay, I, I, I get where you are coming from. So we, we went to Qatar for the draw. Now, after the draw, there was um, two seminars for, first of all, the media managers of all the qualified national teams. As we speak, we have 29 qualified teams yes. because there are three more games. Yeah, well, people have come up, with, yeah. come up with the news that um, Wales, Scotland, and Ukraine. No, 
Scotland and Ukraine, Ukraine will yes. meet June 1st. Okay. And then on June 4th or June 5th, the winner will meet Wales. Wales. Yeah. Okay. So that settles that one. And then there one. is yeah. and then there the Costa Rica. There, there, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. That, that's the CONCACAF zone, yeah. which is playing against uh, Asia. Oceania. Yeah. And then, obviously, there is the winner there, I think, will meet probably uh, uh, Ball's fifth position. So it will settle all those yeah, By June. Yeah, okay. By June. So, um, so, yes, um, we were taking through um, media programs, accreditation process, procedures, and all that. Now, once the accreditation process begins or opens, it will be assessed by everyone across the globe. And Ghanaian journalists can apply. Now, um, there is a code that will be given to every uh, member association. So the Ghanaian journalists who apply for the accreditation must now contact the FA for that code. But the final decision, even though we will play a role, the final decision lies with FIFA. Yes, lies with FIFA. Now, um, let me also mention that unlike our Premier League here in Ghana, or maybe the AFCON, where you can sit in the stands and run commentary on your phone, the World Cup doesn't work that way. So, so if you are a journalist and you are planning to go to Qatar to go right, and right. cover the competition, try as much as possible to secure rights because you can easily be arrested. And you'll if, be in jail. And you'll be in jail if you are found in the stands running commentary on phone. If you are found, pray you are not found. Too risky. But cameras are everywhere. So don't even risk it at all. Because they have sold the media rights, they've taken money from the companies who have bought it, and they want to try as much as possible to protect it. So in the coming days, we will run some of these series, seminars, education, um, to Wait. our journalists. Okay. Yes, we, are. we will try and take them through all the processes, application process, what you must do, what you shouldn't do when you are in Qatar. We will go back to Qatar in, in June yeah. for the final seminar. For which reason we'll have the media manual. The yeah. media manual will be given to every member association. So you then have to speak to that media manual, fact and point by point. And you need to also make it available to the Ghanaian media. Plan is to publish it on the FA website once that is given to us so that they will understand and then we'll also give them a platform, maybe one um, um, press conference where all the questions will be asked and me being the team media officer will be available to take them through the various stages and the various um, you know um, um, programs available to, to, to the media so it is something we are trying to do mm. we've also started we've also started engaging the high commission in in Doha um, the ministry is working on getting uh, as many fans as possible, you know, to go and support the team. We've started engaging the High Commission in Doha. Um, they are a bit strict because of their stance. Um, they want to deal with only the High Commissions of the respected of their respective countries. So, through the Sports Ministry, we've written to the High Commission. We are looking for space. They have built something like a games village in a city called Wakra, um, which is. Um, located at the outskirts of Doha. That is where they want to camp funds who will come from the other countries. If you have the money to sleep in a hotel, the hotels are there for you to book and, 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 and stay in. But if you do not have the money, they, want, they are now building apartments that can house 15 people in a oh, confined wow. area. They are building tents, they are building camps. We went around to visit or to, to inspect some of these facilities. Um, we, we have regular contact with the LOC um, in, in, in Qatar. Um, even yesterday, we had a chat with the marketing and communications manager, who happens to be a Ghanaian, oh, wow. Samantha Sifa. She oh. comes from... <laughs> You know, Carl, I, I, this is saving our passion. And the pinnacle of this passion is the Black Stars. What goes wrong with the Black Stars can affect us. I can say 
since we played the World Cup qualifier against Egypt in 2013, it has taken us this long to get back to this level. Some of the communication problems that are created for the FA to deal with sometimes are not directly coming from them because they are key stakeholders in this. The budgets for the World Cup is not going to be generated only by the FA and, and perused by the FA. There will be other parties who will sit down on the table. The issue has been that sometimes it's not from the FA, but one of the parties may end up releasing a list or releasing something out to the media. Sometimes but it may come can't. from the You see, you this cannot is not escape but, that. Carl, so this is what I'm saying. It's a charge. It's a charge to everybody. You cannot escape it. From now till we go to the World Cup and after the World Cup. If you're a politician... Maybe we should swear an oath. No, yeah, me. I've got to... Even not. Even not. Oh, no, but I'm just saying on, that if you fall, it's not about... I'll let you continue. You see, I am ready to swear an oath. What do you say? Of secrecy. Swear an oath. Yes. <laughs> even when not to, people not to go disclose. to court <laughs> and put their hand on the Bible and the Quran and lie. swear by it. They still they lie. lie. Yes. <laughs> even in court. So, so I'm, I'm appealing to conscience. I'm appealing to conscience because if you're a politician and your, 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 your duty falls in line with this Black Stars activity. You have, to be, you have to be aware that your communication, the comments that you make, can still affect us. If you're a Black Stars player, the way you carry yourself from now is very, very important to keep Ghanaians locked in. Orientation. You know, if, if you are a Ghana Football Association official, the way you go Conduct. about what you say, we have to be careful. If you're a media man, it is, it is a, it's a whole a nation's job. Of of Everybody yeah. must make sure that the comments that you're putting out there are responsible enough. And we haven't said you can't go and do your investigation and all of that. But make sure that what you're bringing out is for the purpose of educating people, the purpose of putting things right, and not go the other way around. Because I think we got complacent after going in 2006 and 2010 yes. and thought we could gamble with 2014, and we messed it up. I don't know. I sit here. Do you still have time? Only, only he just he just spoke and told me about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> quickly, yes. quickly though. So, where do you think we will be in ten years from now if the com completion completion in quote? of a thorough communication department of the FA or of the GFA is fully functioning. Would we still have that, for want of a better word, please, animosity between media, between FA, between public, or it would be a bit more cordial? I expect it to grow cordial. But even as media, I mean, practitioners and, and professionals, we have to understand that there would always be a gap because the pace at which we want the information may not necessarily be there, may not, may not work out the way the FA wants to bring it in. So we, yes, the media would react when information has come out from the Ghana Football Association and background checks prove that it's not the, the case. When the Ghana Football Association has been right or have been truthful and they brought out an information, there will be gaps because here, yeah, sometimes when something happens, quickly we want, we, want, we want the information, we want it. So I think that we will, it, it, will, it will grow. I mean, being cordial, it will, it, it, I think that will grow, but um, there will still be gaps, and, and there are still gaps everywhere. So we have to understand that we have to manage the gaps very well, but it won't stop us from doing our work. So we, we are still going to be watchdogs over what Henry does as a communication mm. director. Mm. And, and we will tell him that we don't think we agree with you here. Henry will say, this is what I thought. But after that banter, it shouldn't go down to, I think that this FA is so bad. I think these guys are no good. These bastards don't no good. I mean, I couldn't believe that some people were still even arguing and, and ahead of the game were still saying Nigeria big gun. I'm like, OK, so I'm supporting Nigeria. So they told me, I'm supporting Nigeria. I'm like, oh, OK. If you support Nigeria, Nigeria beat Ghana. What do you gain from it? Exactly. Ubekoin. Then I said, so why don't you just support Ghana? Even if Ghana lose, you support Ghana. So I think it will grow. But both sides have to play uh, their bit. I don't think the media will stop doing their job and being watchdogs. We'll continue to do that. But we expect that all stakeholders will do it with the one aim 
of making sure that we are starting at a good place. This is a fantastic year for us. The Black Ladies will qualify for the World Cup. Sure. The Black Princesses have qualified. The Black Stars sure. are there. We have athletes who are doing well. Under 17 will be playing soon. Under 20 so, will be under playing 17, soon. Unfortunately, it's happening in Ghana. Yes. So, so a well. uh, qualification all over. It's a good year. You know, I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good time. I think that the media should work more with the federation. Checks prove that it's not the, the case. When the Ghana Football Association has been right or have been truthful and they brought out an information, there will be gaps because here, yeah, sometimes when something happens, quickly we want, we, want, we want the information we want it. So I think that we will, it, it, will, it will grow. I mean, being cordial, it will, it, it, I think that will grow. But... Um, there will still be gaps, and, and there are still gaps everywhere. So we have to understand that we have to manage the gaps very well. But it won't stop us from doing our work. So we, we are still going to be watchdogs over what Henry does as a communication mm. director. Mm. And, and we will tell him that we don't think we agree with you here. And we will say, this is what I thought. But after that banter, it shouldn't go down to, I think that this FA is so bad, I think these guys are no good, these bastards are no good. I mean, I couldn't believe that some people were still even arguing and, and ahead of the game were still saying Nigeria big gun. I'm like, okay, so I'm supporting, they, they, they told me, I'm supporting Nigeria. I'm like, oh, okay. If you support Nigeria, Nigeria big Ghana. What do you gain from it? Exactly. Then I said, so why don't you just support Ghana? Even if you're Ghana lose, you support Ghana. So I think it will grow. But both sides have to play uh, their bit. I don't think the media will stop doing their job and being watchdogs. We'll continue to do that. But we expect that all stakeholders will do it with the one aim of making sure that we are starting at a good place. This is a fantastic year for us. The Black Ladies will qualify for the World Cup. Sure the Black man. Princesses have qualified. The Black Stars sure are there. Man. We have athletes who are doing well. Under 17 will be playing soon. Under 20 so will be under playing 17, soon. Unfortunately, it's happening in Ghana. Yes. So, so a well. uh, qualification all over. It's a good year. You know, I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good time. I think that the media should work more with the federation. There's a lot, uh, given where I sit now, there's a lot uh, would benefit if we also have our FA um, going up there, our teams getting up there. So we, we have to support the Federation carry out its program. I'm not saying that we should not criticize the FA. If they get things right, we should criticize, but not to criticize to destroy. Okay. I think it's, it's, it's the way we move. In the future, I think that things will move. Um, the world itself will change. The media will change. Um, we are getting into Web 3.0. Uh, the metaverse is coming and all of it. It will change the way we communicate. Maybe. In 10 years' time, we might be doing something different. Even the years from now, there are different ways yeah. people are communicating. Yeah. Give it five years, change. electric cars will be... Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Already started already yeah. in America. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch some of the ads you see on that, that CNN US, yeah. they're already advertising cars that have dual roles, dual pet, uh, petrol, and petrol and then... Uh, yeah. 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 Find a word from me, Henry, since you're the current... Group. Well, um, I... I don't want to believe that it, it, it's 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 been hundred um, percent since since we we came into office. Um, we would like to thank the media. Um, like George mentioned, it's been a good year. Um, two of our national teams have already qualified for the World Cup. The Black Maidens will play Guinea on Saturday. I'm very hopeful of a good result in the first leg, and then we'll play them in the second leg on the 30th of of, of April. Aside that, we are hosting the Wafu competition. We are blessed that you know in in our engagement with uh, UEFA Assist, they have taken Ghana as one of their model countries. Today we have a minivan that the the technical directorate is using to train coaches across the country because of UEFA Assist. They came to Ghana to run communication and marketing seminars and courses for our Premier League clubs, our Women's League clubs, and our Division One League clubs. They also came to Ghana to run. Um, football administration and high-level performance courses for all our executive council members, you know, all by UEFA Assist. And today, um, UEFA Assist, um, as a body, have decided to, to sponsor us to organize a four-nation under-17 tournament in Cape Coast um, um, in, in May, and I think it's a good thing. Ghana, Benin, 
and then one country, either Italy or England, will play. Um, we are still seeing uh, the, the, no, the, the other country. Being, okay. Yeah. And and in a, a U17 tournament. Okay. So we, we are making steady progress. Um, we just want to call on the Ghanaian media to be supportive. Our doors are always open. It may not go the way you want, but it shouldn't be the end of the road. Um, let's all come together and, and push the brand and push the industry because it will inure to our benefits. We will all come, uh, you know, benefit from that kick when things go well. We do not have to destroy the brand that fits us. Henry Asante Chum, current direct, uh, communication director at the FA. Thanks for coming on the program. George Addo Jr., sports journalist and um, recently married uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the multimedia broadcasting profession. Oh, recently NBC. married. You married I didn't know that. <laughs> Did you marry at home? Uh, uh, I went to some the other way. Some of us went to the other way. I'm going to let you think that. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let's go some other way. And then Ibrahim Hope, and then Ibrahim Sanidara. Former. Uh, <laughs> 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 Before we do that, before we do that. Former BBC journalist. Oh, come uh -huh. on. <laughs> let, me, let me do my job so I can go home. Go. The owner of the largest... Okay, I'm getting up and going to... <laughs> <laughs> it's made the seat. It's made the seat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've been told to ask the two of you to give your Easter message. So... Please, the two of us. Yes. Oh, but yeah. I can also give it. Yes. So I'll start with you. And he's even fasting, so yes. He can give like Ramadan message well. as well. At the moment, he's not fasting. 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 He's I think it's an opportunity for us to rest. It's been a long, it's been a challenging year from the days of COVID. Let's not delve into anything that will be uh, trouble for us. Let's um, come together and celebrate the, the, the death of Christ. Yes, right. Death and resurrection. Uh, death and resurrection of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. George Addo Jr. I think Easter is, Easter is all about forgiveness. That's the key theme. So I don't want you to be holding any grudges against anyone. It's, an, it's a wonderful window to drop all the problems and key. Because we're human beings who all die one day. Let us enjoy the time we have on this world. And this is an opportunity to forgive anybody who has wronged you. Have a fantastic time. Enjoy. It's a Kia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Happy Easter to everybody. Uh, be safe with your families and everyone. Let's be united as a country. Let's be united as a people. And Ramadan Mubarak to uh, every Muslim fasting in Ghana and those not capable of fasting for various reasons. Enjoy yourself. Be safe and be with your families. Thank you. Great stuff. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Um, I think let let it be said here at 7 p.m. tomorrow okay 7 30 p.m. tomorrow we will be interviewing the FA chairman live. president not no life you know it mm -hmm. but Kurt will be talking to the nation as it is oh, okay we had an interview with him about a week ago. Okay. Over one and a half hours. Wow. On everything that's on his chest. He let it all out. Mm. It's going out unedited, only a few little minor things there, but as his word, nothing had been misquoted. So please spread the word, make a date. GTV Sports Plus tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. I will watch. Kurt talks you have to. to the nation. <laughs> it will be repeated on Sunday at 6 p.m. Yeah. My producer is, oh, God. The repeat should have been in place of Sunday Night Live. So, so you don't do, come to They're going to come to do Sunday Night Live. Yeah. Ah, 
No, but it's not too late. Uh, Mr. Yebo Abako, <laughs> whatever <laughs> it is, Kurt will be talking to the nation on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Okay. And it will be repeated on Sunday at 6 p.m. Right. Thank you very much. And incidentally, folks, very good news, though. Uh -huh. Barcelona lost 3 2 at home. Wow. They lost 3 2 at home. No. And they only, it only happened because they gave Frankfurt, a Frankfurt player, a red card. They were 3 0 up at one stage. Wow. Yeah. So that tells you the whole thing about football. So when the Nigerian Amokachi gets up and says, we have our stadium, we have this. And some people don't even know where to play. <laughs> some people are in confusion. They are in confusion. Hold on. Hold on. They want, they want me to allow you to have, make a comment or two about the Barcelona game. Truth be told, they were 3 nil down at one stage. It led to a, it was when the red card took place that they got the two goals. Your comment? Maybe the better team won on the day. <laughs> when I was leaving home, they won. won yeah. But I didn't want them to win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, you know, you know, that, you know, like in the first leg it was very tight. I mean, Frankfurt yeah, showed it the, yeah, it was one one. Yeah, yeah, one one. They really showed that there could be, there could be a problem. Yeah. And 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 I, I told my Barcelona friends that yes, Xavi is doing a good job, but don't let it seem like everything is done and everything is sorted. This is like a reality check for them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully they can go on there, but I think they have a good setup. Yeah, a, a reality check like Atletico Madrid. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. No, laughs> And then the only himself. problem in life Sunny is my friends la laughing at Chelsea, mocking Chelsea fans. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea where? Chelsea where? Uh, in fact, Carl, uh, do you know you introduced me to Barcelona many years ago? Do you know? What was this? Many, many years ago. I don't no. remember when, but you gave me a magazine when I was a little child. No. You gave me a magazine that, you know, spoke about the history behind Barcelona, okay. what uh, yeah. they do, had, the I community had, I had, team, I had, I had and those. I completely was bought over by, by that magazine. Many years ago, maybe over 25 years ago, mm. I took that magazine from you from Joy FM. Um, it was just about when Joy FM was starting. I took that magazine from you. Okay. Uh, at the doors of Joy FM. Okay, please bring me back the magazine. I can't find it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the Frankfurt team, there's a Ghanaian, North. Yes, yes, yes. North, yes. 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 That's what good, good striker. That, yes. Yes. That's what yeah. really piqued my interest. Yes. Yes. yes, good striker. Yes, yes. He might be one. I just hope we'll look one of for. I will check, but I just hope one of the But anyway, yeah. 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 Um, before we leave, we are going to have this little promo. Take a look at it. From the depths and despair of Garua. It's all over in Garua. It's heartbreak for Ghana. To the ecstasy and the nation of Abuja. In between this period were the efforts of saving our passion, which is football. It is clear some lessons got needed to the successful qualification of Ghana to the World Cup in Qatar 2022. The GFA's chief servant, Kurt Edwin Simeon Okweku, speaks on the intrigues of bringing back the love to our passion. Only on GTV Sports Plus, watch the GFA president, Kurt Okweku, talk to the nation. From the depths and despair of Garua. It's all over in Garua. It's heartbreak for Ghana. To the ecstasy and the nation of Abuja. In between this period were the efforts of saving our passion, which is football. It is clear some lessons got needed to the successful qualification of Ghana to the World Cup in Qatar 2022. The GFA's chief servant, Kurt Edwin Simeon Okweku, speaks on the intrigues of bringing back the love to our past. Only on GTV Sports Plus, watch the GFA president, Kurt Okweku, talk to the nation. That's it. We are finally over and done. We thank you guys for coming once again. God richly bless you. Thank you. Um, the guys who do the fabulous job behind the scenes, you don't know them, but they're absolutely fabulous. Cameramen, lightning men, stuntmen, video editors, all manner of things. Henry knows about them, though. But more importantly, thank you for watching. Without you, this program would not be anywhere. God willing, we should be back next week with another episode of Saving Our Passion. And we have been given the go-ahead to continue right up to the World Cup. Oh. So we're going to be doing it every Thursday. But don't forget, 
there's a live African uh, game this weekend. And when there are not African games, Sunday Night Live will be in full effect. Have a fabulous week. Goodbye.